may proceed when ready. Thank you. Uh, would you tell us your name, please? Chad Kaufman. And uh, how are you employed? Uh, through Schumacher Clinical Partners, but I work full-time at UH Samaritan Hospital. Okay, let's start with Schumacher Medical Partners. What is that? It's a contract company that supplies emergency room physicians and physician assistants to emergency departments around the country. Okay, and then you are posted or assigned, I guess, to UH Samaritan here in Ashland? Correct. And uh, what is your title, if any? I am currently the medical director of the department as well as a physician assistant that works there. Okay. And what are your duties as medical director? Administrative. I hire um, physicians, PAs, do administrative duties in the hospital regarding our group in the hospital. Okay. And what is a physician's assistant? It's a medical provider that ha I have a master's degree, so I have an undergraduate degree, then go to a PA program which is typically a master's degree. There's a didactic phase, um, a clinical phase, and then I work as a physician assistant, which re requires me to have a relationship with a supervising physician. Okay. What sort of things uh, does a, is a physician's assistant able to do? Um, so most people wouldn't know the difference between a physician and physician assistant when they come see me. So we place lines, we do all the procedures, um, chest tubes, uh, we do exams like pelvic exams, we um, you know, evaluate complaints, order tests. Um, once the tests come back, we determine what the next steps are as far as treatment. Okay. Um, are you able to uh, prescribe medication? Yes. We show defense counsel that we mark the state's exhibit 258. Show you what we marked for purposes of identification as state's exhibit 258. Okay. Can you identify that document? That's my CV. Okay, and what is the CV? Uh, curriculum Vitale, which is uh, my work experience, my educational experience um, over a career. Okay. And what is your educational background? Um, I got a biology degree at Whitberg University down in Springfield, Ohio. And then I went to, um, I have a master's degree from Medical College of Ohio, which is currently UTMCO up in Toledo, Ohio. It's part of the medical school up there. Okay. And approximately how long did it take to uh, achieve a master's degree from uh, Toledo? It was two and a half years. Okay. And then uh, since that time, uh, what is your work experience? I've worked full time at Samaritan Hospital for my whole career, so almost 18 years. I've also worked part time at various hospitals um, in the state of Ohio, probably eight to 10 um, other hospitals on a part time basis. Okay. And to be a phys physician's assistant, does that require licensure by the state of Ohio? Yes. And what does that process entail? Uh, you have to remain credentialed and pass a national examination. Um, the NCAPPA NCA, NCA um, is a national organization where you have a, um, a certified exam that you have to take every seven years. You have to pass that exam in order to be eligible to, to be licensed in any state. Um, and then the state process, you have to reapply on every two years with certain continuing medical education credits, um, as well as passing the national exam every seven years. Okay. And how long have you been so licensed? 18 years. And uh, you were licensed, uh, so licensed in September of 2016? It, I may have gotten re-licensed, re yeah. Okay, but you were, you were current at the time. Yes. You gotta yeah. be current in order to- I've been continuously to... current throughout my career. It's one of those ridiculous attorney questions. Yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> are you familiar then as the medical director with what uh, uh, we've heard is a safe uh, examination? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And uh, you're familiar with Nurse Riley? I am. All right. She sort of explained the procedure to us. Uh, in her testimony, she described needing a, a medical provider uh, to assist in that examination. Correct. 
Um, have you assist, so assisted? I have. All right. I'm going to draw your attention specifically to September 13th, 2016. Were you working? I was. And did you have an opportunity to participate in the treatment of a Lori's fillet? I did. I'll show you what we've heard. We'll see Mark is a certified copy of the medical records for Lori's fillet. This states exhibit 245. Okay. <laughs> what was your role in the treatment of Lori uh, on this occasion? So what typically happens is when an alleged assault arrives, the safe nurse um, takes that person to a room and triages them, make sure there's not any life-threatening issues that need to be taken care of immediately. If that's not the case, then they go through a prolonged process to gather information. Um, the whole point of the safe exam is so multiple people don't go in and trying to get the same information over and over again. So my role is once that is to a point where we need to uh, collect samples that are provided by state kit, um, then I come into the room and explain what, what I'm there for um, and the type of exam she's about to have, or he, and um, then we go on from there. Okay. And what type of exam was Lori about to have when uh, you engaged in that process with her? Well, so when I come in, I do a general exam, just again, to make sure that there isn't any life-threatening injuries that we need to take care of. Um, and then we do a vaginal exam and a pelvic exam to collect uh, the samples that are required. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, on this particular occasion, did Lori have anything that you considered to be life-threatening? No. Okay. Um, and how do you go about determining that? Well, we look at vital signs. Um, you know, typically when somebody has a serious injury, physiologically, they're no longer normal. So we look at pulse and blood pressure. Um, we look at the areas. Uh, she has tenderness, like from, for instance, a traumatic injury. Does she have significant tenderness or deformity of the neck or an extremity? Does she have um, abdominal discomfort to a point where we're concerned about intra-abdominal trauma? So those kinds of things are looked for. Okay. And you engaged in such an examination of Lori's Correct. fillet? Correct. <clears throat> and what'd you find? Um, she obviously life-threatening trauma is different than just trauma. So she was clearly uh, traumatized from an emotional standpoint as well as a physical standpoint. Um, she had areas of bruising um, that I think were documented well by Nurse Riley. Um, otherwise, her her chest exam, her lungs, her heart, her abdominal exam wouldn't lead me to believe that there was any significant life-threatening injury. Okay. And that's your primary concern? Correct. Non-life-threatening injury, you leave to the nurse that's conducting the uh, safe exam? Right. In this case, Nurse Riley? Correct. Okay. So when you're done with that examination, what do you do? Then I explained to them, obviously, they potentially were just through a very traumatic um, situation. So. I explained to them very carefully what I need to do and uh, what it's going to feel like, um, and then I proceed with the nurse um, assisting me. And I guess what do you explain in that regard? Well, I explain that we have to look um, around her vaginal area and her genitalia. Um, we're going to that, that we're going to take samples um, to get information. Um, I also use a speculum to actually visualize the cervix and the, um, the vaginal wall, <clears throat> excuse me, wall. Um, so I try to go step by step what this process is going to be before I actually do anything. And then, and then we slowly um, complete the exam. And what is a speculum? A speculum is a device, it's a lighted device that you can insert into the uh, va vagina into the cavity to open it up so you can actually visualize the cervix. The cervix is what comes out of the uterus. Um, there's what's called a cervical os um, that is a little opening that we visualize to see one, you know, if there's trauma, if there's discharge, it depends on the reason for the exam. We're looking for different things. And uh, do you have to position 
uh, the patient in a particular manner in order to complete such an examination? Yeah, so she typically is just on a regular exam bed. Um, and we have to have her bend her knees and kind of relax her thighs so her legs kind of fall out so we can actually visualize uh, her vagina. And then we also position her pelvis up a little bit so then I can insert the speculum um, a little easier. And um, I guess that's a... Uh, it sounds to someone who hasn't ever seen or been subjected to this that somebody that's just been through a sexual assault... It could be traumatic. Uh, it could be traumatic yeah. uh, doing this sort of examination. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. Is that why you have to engage in some significant explanation of, yeah. of what's going on and exactly what you're doing? Correct. Okay. Um, fair to say it's uncomfortable for the patient? I would think so. Yeah. So <clears throat> you performed such an examination on Lori's fillet? Correct. And what did you find, if anything? Um, a couple things. Um, she didn't really have any significant trauma to the labia majora, which is the outside of the genitalia. The labia minora looked reasonably well too. It wasn't significantly traumatized. I didn't see any bruising or swelling. The um, vaginal wall, as I inserted the speculum, clearly on both sides of the vaginal wall, there were some linear abrasions, which would suggest kind of um, a repetitive traumatic kind of event. Um, the cervix, the cervical os was closed. There was a little bit of material around the cervix, um, which isn't unusual. Um, Mucousy kind of material and, and, and liquid uh, material. Um, otherwise, there is no large lacerations. There is no significant bruising. Okay. Um, fair to say the abrasion shouldn't be there ordinarily. No, um, not under normal circumstances. It, it would suggest repetitive trauma. Okay. And uh, when you say that uh, there's material around the cervix and liquid, uh, and you say that you, that's, is that normal? It can be. Um, so it's called a vaginal cul-de-sac that's right around the cervix, and that's an area where liquid and material collect. So women do naturally have mucus and some discharge. Um, her material, as I document, it, it was liquid and brownish material. So sometimes, you know, typically it's not brownish, it's a little odd color. Sometimes that can be from bleeding. Sometimes old blood will appear that way, with, you know, mixed with uh, mucousy material. Um, it, can be, it can be bloody material, but that's just, um, sometimes when people had a period and have been done for, for several days, you can find similar um, findings. Okay. Um. But given, given the abrasions that you saw and documented within the medical records, I guess it wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't be surprised to find a brownish liquid. No, yeah. not horribly. Okay. Um, now you said you also engage in uh, part of the collection of evidence? Correct. And what is your role in that? So the state provides a collection kit and then the nurse um, goes through the instructions carefully and hands me um, specimens. There's multiple specimens that you do within the vagina around the area that I'm discussing, around the cervix and even into the cervical os. So there's several, um, um, almost look like applicators, like tip applicators that you just kind of put into that material, you put around the cervix, and then you put it into a container that's provided by the state. Okay. And then is that commonly referred to as a rape kit? Correct. And I'll show you what we marked as case exhibit 257. We've got a prior testimony. This is, in fact, a rape kit from this particular instance. Mm -hmm. So is that typically what those look like? Correct. Okay. And do you collect all of the swabs that go into this or just some? I collect all the vaginal swabs, um, and I believe in this case... I collected the swabs from the mouth as well. Okay. 
and then you turn those over to the nurse. Correct. So and she hands me the swabs. I hand them right back. They go right into the kit. And she observes you uh, collecting this. In this Correct. And then she maintains custody of that until it leaves her custody. Correct. And those are swabs that you've administered previously. Yeah, they're they're not atypical from things that we do just looking for infection. Mm -hmm. So it's a very similar process that I do every day. Okay. Now you said you also have the ability to prescribe medication? Correct. Did you do so in this case? I did not. Okay. Was there medication provided to Lori as part of uh, the treatment protocol? On yes, so the state put together in these circumstances, it's really protocol based. Okay. And so there are certain medications that are automatically offered and suggested um, that the patient take and receive. Mm -hmm. And they're typically provided by the hospital. The nurse actually, that's part of the <coughs> protocol. She goes through that process, explains um, the reason for each medication, and then uh, the patient can decide whether they want them or not. Okay. And medication was in fact uh, given in this particular instance? Correct. Typically, what are those medications for? They're typically antibiotics to try to, um, you know, if there's an infection that was given um, through the sexual assault. Um, there's also medication to try to prevent pregnancy. Um, and there's also medication offered if there's an HIV concern, uh, some kind of sexually transmitted uh, disease that could be life-threatening in the future. And she opted to, to take all those medications. And I think we had some testimony from Nurse Riley that uh, referenced Plan B. Correct. Now that's not an abortive medication. No, if you take it, you know, within a few days of the instant, it just it basically helps the egg um, not attach to the uterus. So um, you can certainly look at papers to see if people may disagree on exactly how it works. But the the point is that it. it if you take it early enough, it prevents pregnancy. Okay. It's not an abortive. It's not an abortive kind of um, medication. Okay, so one could take that without, uh, I guess, offending their religious views. Correct. Thank you. Cross examine. Uh, no, Judge. We have no questions. Well, thank you. Thank you. You're excused. Thank you. Your Honor, this wish this witness wishes not to be streamed or photographed. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Latanzi, can you confirm that the streaming computer is paused, the video is paused, please? Sam, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter to be the truth of Yes. Want to approach? Now 11.33 on the courtroom clock. Uh, all 12 jurors and five alternates are returned to the courtroom. Defendants present with counsel as our counsel for the state of Ohio. Uh, we'll have Ms. Billick return to the witness stand as soon as the bailiff can, can get her in the courtroom. I need you to turn and raise your right hand for me. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony about the given this matter? Should we get Mr. Tunnell, you still have an exhibit up here. This is the microphone. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Tunnell, you may proceed. Could you tell us your name, please? Lauren Desilic. 
Lauren Desvillick. Speak up as loud as you can, okay? Okay. All right, spell your last name. S-V-I-H-L-I-K. And how old are you, Lori? 38. You go by Lori? Yes. And how long do you live in Ashley? Um, since I was 21. <clears throat> and how old are you now? 38. Okay. And uh, you say an apartment or a house? Apartment. <clears throat> and what's your apartment look like inside? How big is it? Um, it's a one bedroom. Okay. Are there other rooms outside of the bedroom? There's a living room and a dining room and a kitchen and a bathroom. Do you have any hobbies? Um, I like to paint, make music, um, write. If you, just move the microphone. Okay. Okay. Yes. Just try to keep speaking up. Okay. okay. Uh, you paint? Yes. And we've seen some pictures of them. Do you keep uh, your paintings, some of them, on the wall? Yes. And what sort of things do you like to paint? Ideas. <coughs> what sort of ideas? Um, uh, capturing expression, um, like, I don't know. Biblical themes, like. Okay. Have you always painted? Um, yeah. And you said you play music? <clears throat> yes. You play instruments? Yes. What instruments do you play? Guitar. And how long have you played guitar? Um, about eight years, I want to say. Okay. Do you just play for yourself, or have you played with other players? I've played for church um, and with other people. And okay. What sort of music do you like? Oh, worship primarily, um, but I like I love every kind of music that's good. Okay. <laughs> like good, good music? Yes. All right. And do you also like to read? Yes, I love to read. What sort of things do you read? The Bible. Uh, all versions or one particular version? All versions. Is there a version of the Bible you haven't read? Uh, Hebrew. I would love to know Hebrew enough to learn it, to read it in Hebrew. Okay. And are you working on learning Hebrew currently? I am. Are you taking a class? Or? Um, no, I'm just being taught with those who know it. So okay. It's not a formal class. So you're just sort of informally teaching yourself Hebrew? Yes, yes. And it's your goal to read the Bible in Hebrew. Yes. Why read the Bible in Hebrew? Because that's the original language. Okay. So you think in, in multiple versions, there's different versions of the Bible, and each one's got the stories a little different, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. There's just a lot more in the Hebrew that, like, when, when you put it, translate, try to translate it into English, it, it doesn't... It, it would be a lot bigger of a book if it was written in Hebrew, actually. Is it Hebrew? Yes. Um, more information? Yes. Okay. <coughs> now, do you, are you familiar with the Croc Center? Yes. Uh, how often do you go to the Croc Center? Maybe a couple times a week. Okay. And what do you do there? Um, have lunch and meet with people. Yeah, it's kind of just a gathering. And how long have you done that? Uh, a year and a half, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in 2016, had you just started going to the Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> At some point in 2016, did you meet a guy named Sean? Yes. Where did you meet Sean? At the Crack Center. Do you know approximately when? No. Okay. Um, 
how long would you say you had known Sean Gray before events occurred that brought you here? Uh, about a month and a half. All right. And you first met him at the cross? Yes. Tell us about that. Um, Uh, one day I was just walking on my way to the Crocs Center and he was walking also the opposite side of the street and uh, or not the opposite side but in the opposite direction and uh, we just both turned in together and that's when we first you know, no, no, just... okay. and on that occasion did you have lunch together yeah I think so yeah there, it was actually one of those days that there wasn't many people there so do you recall what you talked about? No. Yeah. All right. Is it uncommon to meet new people at the Crocs Center? No. You've done that before? Mm hmm And do you like converse, conversation? Yeah. Okay. So you're the sort of person who would be interested in just sitting down and talking to people? I mean, not necessarily outright strangers. And, but right. Not seeking it out. Yeah, right, yeah. But if there's a conversation we had, sure. there, you yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> After that first meeting at the Crocs Center, did you see Sean Gray again? Yes, but I can't recall when. Okay. Uh, did you come to see him on a more regular basis? Yes. How often, I guess, would you see uh, Sean? I'm going to go with a couple times a week. Okay. Now, what sorts of things would you do? Well, we probably when I would run into him at lunch, and if neither one of us was doing anything, we just walk to just walk around Ashland. Okay. Any particular purpose to the walk? Nope. Would you have any particular destination? No, nope, just enjoying the weather and walking. Okay. And let's say a month and a half before the events we're discussing here, that would be what, August? Maybe even late July? I think it was late July. Okay. Uh, so it's summer? Yes. Weather's relatively nice? Mm hmm. Okay. Um, And would you also meet for lunch? Yes. Where would you do that? Uh, excuse me? Where would you do that? Always at the Crocs Center yeah. or somewhere? Mm -hmm. Yes, always at the Crocs Center. Okay. How would you describe your relationship with Sean Gray in, say, August of 2016? Probably in August, probably like a brother, an older brother. Okay. What about it was in sort of an older brother sense. Well, he was tall like my brother, my older brother, and uh, he's kind of goofy, but he was, he struck me as kind. Okay. And while you would walk, would you also converse? Oh, yeah. Uh, about what? What would you talk about? The Bible, um, life. Um, he would tell me a lot about himself. Okay. Uh, was he interested in the Bible? Yes. Take it you're interested. Yes. Okay. Uh, how long would these walks typically take? Uh, probably the day. Yeah. Okay. So an all, all day walk? I think so. I, I take it they would bear. Yeah. Not. Yeah. 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 I was like pretty much whenever we, I'd get tired or something, you know, just. Dinner would we'll probably be back for dinner or something, you know. Now, did you have a job or work anywhere? Um, perhaps picking up just like part time jobs, but nothing steady. Okay. How about Sean? Um, when I first met him, he was working at um, Save a Lot, and um, then he was, I think he was working various other jobs. And was there a time when he wasn't working at Save a Lot anymore? Yes, but I can't say when. Okay. But you worked there for a little bit. Mm-hmm. 
Um, would you also play tennis? Yes. Where would you play tennis? Um, at the park. Okay. In Ashley? Mm hmm So it's in Brookside. Right. Yes. There by the puck bat? Right. Okay. And how often did you play with Sean? Yes. Did you, at the time, have anybody else to play tennis with? No. Had you found anybody to play tennis with in the water? Yeah, no, I don't typically find people who play or walk around. <laughs> or, or, or go for walks. Yeah. Okay. And uh, how often would you say you play tennis with Sean? Whenever the weather was, you know, was good enough, you know, not too hot or so. Like we, I, I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't know if it was even every week. Maybe it was once a week or twice. I don't know. Okay. Um, was there ever a discussion of turning your relationship into more than just a friend sort of situation? He discussed it, but um, no, I... I what, what did he say in that regard? Well, he would. I think I was. He let me know that he was would be interested in more, but you know, I, I told him that I wasn't interested in you know and beyond friends, and that you know. Was it a frequent topic on his part? No. Or just more than a one-time conversation? Um, what, I don't think he... I can't recall that it was... it was anything freaking or anything because, I mean, I was pretty much set and he knew it and anytime he would try to discuss anything. I think he even laughed too, you know, like that he knew that he was just kind of reaching so you weren't interested in any kind of beyond friends relationship? Correct. Um, do you have an opinion of or, or views on what we'll call premarital sexual relations? Yeah. <laughs> that? Um, that it's a no-no. <laughs> okay. That would... That, that, that would be contrary to your beliefs. Yeah. Uh, had Sean been to your apartment? He'd been there, but he'd never been in. Okay. He never came inside. Correct. Why not? Because I have boundaries. I don't. I don't let guys into my place. Okay. Why is that? <coughs> because it's. It's just not something. It's just not a good idea. Okay. And did he ever say anything about not being allowed in? I don't think so. I think he just always understood that. And I, I mean, probably because we talk about the Bible so much, so he knew that that was my character. Okay. Uh, how about exchanging phone numbers? No, I don't do that either, so... So you wouldn't take his phone No, he tried to get me a, a few times, um, too, but now I had set rules about that. Okay. So you've got, you've got boundaries in place from yes. things you adhere to. Yes. To sort of wall that sort of thing off. Exactly. Uh, did he appear to respect that? Absolutely. Where was Sean living? Um, the house by the laundromat on 3rd Street or 2nd Street. Okay. And had you been there before? We walked past it a few times. Um, I knew of it, and that's about it. 
Okay. Had you ever been inside prior to the events that uh, brought you here? Once or twice. Once or twice, maybe. Yeah. Okay. And what was your impression? How do you mean? Like you went inside. What did it look? It was small inside. Okay. How so? Um, the side door just opens into the kitchen that just leads to one room, like, and the main room was just right there, and that's about it. Okay. And you thought you went there once or twice before? Yeah. The first time, um, we had another guy walking with us that we knew from the croc center also and uh so we were all walking together and that was actually why i went in you know because there was with you know someone else that i knew and and okay and did the house seem okay on that occasion yeah and how about the second the second time i think was the night before um okay and how did the house appear on that occasion? It was dirty. Dirty how? Um, there was a... The dirty dishes and stuff. Did it smell? I think so. I don't know. You don't recall? I don't. I'm not sure. I, uh, there was, fl like, there was, um, you know, those, like, gnats. Not necessarily full flies, but there is, you know, and that was nasty. So I, you know, kind of chided him on that and uh, backed away. Okay. And, and then you say that's the night before? Yes. The night before you ended up there? Yes. In that house. Okay. And what did you go there for? Uh, at that time? Um, I don't... We were, I'm not sure if we were walking to the park or something, and it was just something like really quick you needed to drop off or get something, you know, so it was just picking it up and just, you know, when you're walking with a person and talking and you do something, you know, you just go in in a, in a hurry, you know, and grab something, and so that was about it. So how far did you go in? Um, I think, like I said, it, it's a... It was just the, I think the kitchen, but I mean, yeah, I think it was the kitchen. Yeah. So that's about it. Had you mentioned to him, you chided him, I think is your word, that uh, it was buggy and dirty? Yeah, it was, I thought it was untypical, it was atypical of him because he's normally struck me as very clean. Okay. And what was his reaction? I can't really recall. Um, maybe he just had some excuse, like uh, he just had it backed up or something. I don't know. Did there come a time when you uh, took a long walk to Fort Woods? Yes. How did that come? Uh, we were looking for something to do, I suppose, that day, uh, and it's, and you know, something new because when you walk around Ashland, it's relatively small, and I like adventure, you know. Okay. And he was mentioning that um, he had spent the Fourth of July in this uh, this fort that he built and watched the fireworks like from the where he was staying, and it just sounded really cool and. And he had said that he left stuff there that he was going to pick up, and I was like, I think I said, well, that's, there's an idea. We can do that. Okay. Did you have an idea when you started of how far away this was? No. Um, I think he said it was just, just, I don't know, take a, like an hour and a half. I think it took a lot, uh, at least a couple hours at least to walk there. Okay. And we were walking at a good clip. And what did you find when you got there? It was as he said. I mean, it was this actually pretty cool little fort that he built himself. Okay. And did he sort of show you around? Yeah. 
And did he give you anything? Um, he dug up this box that had um, gems or rocks or something, like geodes or something. Yeah. And that I think that was why he wanted to get or something. Um, when when we walked as we were, arrived like back um, into Ashland, um, he he'd always walk me to my building, you know, instead of just you know. So that's when he gave it to me, and he's like, "Hold on to this for me," or I don't, I don't really remember the nature of it, but I mean, I just. And he dug it up. Yes. Was it buried? Mm-hmm. There before. Yes. And uh, what did you think of it? No, I didn't really think anything of it. I just. It's just rocks. So I don't know. I, I mean, he, I, he showed me them. I, mean, I don't know. I guess it kind of looked cool, but I'm not really. I mean, not really into things. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what'd you do with it? I just. I think I just. <coughs> like, I just kind of left it on the side of my couch and like. When I vacuum, it got you know pushed under the couch. Okay. Now, is your apartment fairly orderly? Yes. Okay. How about under the couch? Yeah, that's kind of where you know I, things just get you know pushed under there. It's just kind of where things end up. Yeah, when you're sweeping. Uh, so it ended up under the couch. Yeah. It's kind of a storing spot. Now, do you have a particular place that you uh, put your money within your apartment? Yeah. Where's that? I just toss it in my bookshelf. Okay. Any particular place in the bookshelf? No, just on top. Yeah. Did you have a green wallet at one time? Mm hmm And where was that? Right there. And what was in there, if anything? Just my, you know, needed money. Okay. Typically, uh, did you keep a lot of money in the green house? No more than fifty dollars. Did there come a time uh, when uh, you loaned Sean some band-aids and some Mhm. Mm when was that? Like a week and a half or so before the. Okay. And what did he need those? I think he was <clears throat> he was helping a friend of ours move, and uh, he got his. He said he, he had this really bad gash on his leg and. So when he came knocking on my door, he said it reopened, and he wondered, you know, if I had anything or something. Okay. Or, and so you gave him some band-aids? Yeah. The whole box? Mm-hmm. And I took the music? Yes. And he took those with him then from your apartment? Mm-hmm. Uh, did you know Elizabeth Griffin? Yes. And how did you know Elizabeth Griffin? She lived in the building next to me. And how would you describe Elizabeth? Um, sweet, but like a child. Okay. Did she ever meet uh, Sean Gray? One time, to my knowledge. Okay. Were you present? Yes, I, yes, that was the only time that I knew of that they met. And describe that. Um, Sean and I were playing badminton in in the front yard, like in the where our two buildings are. Well, in the and Elizabeth saw us and came out. 
Okay. And did she introduce herself? Did you introduce her? I think she just started, yeah, talking with us. And yeah, I don't know if I introduced her or if she introduced herself. Okay. But they met at that point? Yes, that I know of. And outside of that? I, I have no idea. Do you know approximately when that was? I no. Oh. And at that time, I guess, did you say anything to Elizabeth? To what nature? Give her some advice. Y yeah, um, Elizabeth had um, problems, like m mental problems. I mean, and she would kind of relay her whole history, like right off the bat. And she started going into it, you know. And I've talked to her before about, you know, you need to first build trust, you know, because people could just use that kind of information poorly, you know. And so she just started getting carried away. And so I just kind of reminded her, we don't need it. Okay. But that, you've observed that of Elizabeth on other occasions? Yeah. You sort of tell everybody everything about herself? Yes, right yeah, yeah. Um, would you consider Elizabeth a friend? An acquaintance. Okay. Um, would Elizabeth also uh, eat occasionally at the Crop Center? Yes. And you'd seen her up there mm -hmm. before as well. Mm -hmm. um, did you and Sean ever have lunch with Elizabeth? No, not that I record or recollect. And I'm, I'm sort of picturing uh, lunch at the Crop Center would be sort of like a, like a cafeteria kind of, with different tables, at least down in the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. So somebody else might be having lunch in there at the same time, not at your thing. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you recall September 11th? Yes. Uh, did you and Sean uh, go for a walk that day? Yes. And do you recall what day of the week that would have been? Sunday. Okay. Now, do you attend, a, were you attending a regular church at that time? Not at that time. You had the past? Yes. Uh, so where did you and Sean go on that particular Um, I forget what the park is. Um, we walked to a, a park, um, and then we walked to uh, the Dollar Tree. Okay. Dollar Tree is where? Um, the Walmart Plaza. Okay. So the Dollar Tree's out by Walmart. Was the park out that way? Yeah. On the same road or? Um, off that road. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. Jameson Creek? Y yeah, I think so. Okay. Yes. Yes, it is. And uh, what'd you go to the Dollar Tree for? Oh, um, I needed cleaning supplies. And you walked there. Mm -hmm. Did you walk back? Um, we were beginning to, and then um, a friend stopped. And who's the friend? Tamara. Okay. And how do you know Tamara? We'd been friends for quite a while. And did she offer to give you a ride? Yes. Where was she coming from? You know? She was getting off work at Walmart. All right. And uh, where did she take both of you? Um, to my apartment. But... Do you recall the conversation, uh, the topics of conversation in the vehicle? Not really. I was kind of worn out 
hungry by that time, so I just took the back seat, so I didn't have to really converse much. <laughs> What happened when she dropped you off? Um, I made peanut butter sandwiches for Sean and I, and uh, and so he took his to eat outside. And I ate mine inside my apartment, um, and yeah. Okay. When uh, after let me go back just a little bit okay. after speaking with the camera. Were you expecting uh, to be contacted by a police detective? No. Okay. You don't recall if you were not or not? Uh, I don't recall. There wasn't anything in the car that made an impression on you. Did you recall at this point? No. Okay. So when you say that you made sandwiches and you ate in your apartment and Sean went outside, you mean outside the building? Yeah. At at first, he would, he would sit outside my door and was eating, and I was kind of like standing in the doorway, but I just felt uncomfortable, so I kind of shut my door a bit and and went to the dining room where I ate, and he said uh, that he would eat, finish his outside. Okay. And that's because you don't allow him? Right. When you say you were feeling strange about it... And, I don't know. Sometimes I just don't like eating in front of people. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I was just moody. I don't know. So, so you had to go outside. Yeah. What was Sean's mood uh, on this day? <coughs> and for a walk to the right back, how was Sean? Um, fine, I guess. Nothing out of the ordinary? No. Uh, when you were done with your sandwich, what did you do? Um, he had said that his mother had, uh, he'd gotten, his mother and his sister had given a, a bag of clothes that he had for me. Okay. Had he given you bags of clothes in the past? Once prior. Okay. And where was your understanding of with this bag of clothes? Where was it supposed to be? Well, it was at his place. Um, had you been discussing other topics this day? Probably just the typical Bible and whatever. <laughs> On this particular day, did you have any uh, Bible passages you were interested in? Yeah, I, I remember, uh, yeah, I don't know what the topics were of that day, but uh, I, I remember him asking if I had an extra Bible because he didn't have one, and he, you know, he really liked one. Okay. So, so I got him one, and yeah. I know there's passages that uh, I don't know along the way or what that I wanted to show him in and the Bible. Did he seem interested in seeing or hearing those passages? Yeah. Do you recall which passages? No. So, what you do? So we walked back to his place, and um, I just walked inside. He showed me the, this big bag of clothes, and he was showing me some of the stuff in there, and I said, yeah, that looks fine. Um, and what, how were these packaged? It was a, like a big bag of like clothes. It was like a see-through bag. Okay, so it's a, it's a clear bag. Yeah, a clear bag. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, where were you originally going to sit and, and check out these Bible passages? I don't know. I didn't have, you know, didn't have a plan. He just started showing me the clothes, and I said, yeah, it's fine, I'll look at it, whatever I don't like or want or something, I'll, you know, redonate. Um and he was going to walk me back to my place, and I was, and you know, I just had those Bible passages on mine, so I just flipped them open and sat down on the bed and started reading them or showing them. Um, so you entered the house voluntarily. 
Yes. I guess help us reconcile the idea that he, he can't be in your apartment, but you came in. Right. Um, I don't know. <laughs> It was just I, probably because I felt more like I can control my ability to leave, and I knew it was going to be soon. Okay, you weren't planning on staying long. No. And were you going to leave this Bible? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, and take the clothes. Mm -hmm. um, did you also had you loaned him other things outside of the band aids? Things from the library, material from the library. Okay, like what? Uh, DVDs, some DVDs. Okay, she had some DVDs. Uh, had they, uh, those weren't things you loaned him that day? I think uh, it was the day before. I think it was a Saturday that we got them. Okay. And so on this occasion, they were already there. Right. So you were going to take the clothes and leave them Mm-hmm. Why sit on the bed? It was like the only thing right there. Okay. And what happened? So I was reading the Bible and uh, he just started taking it from me. Yeah. Pulling it out of my hands. Was he seated with you? No, he was standing. Um, before he began taking the Bible out of your hands, how had he been? What was his uh, I think when I first pulled out the Bible, we just both sat down on the edge of the bed, and I was showing him the passages and reading them, and, and he was looking at it while I was reading it, and... You know, I was, the Bible excites me. I mean, it, so, um, and, but I, I know, it, I don't know if it felt like it didn't really have his attention right there, but um, I was going to stop because I looked at him, and he's like, no, I'm interested, keep going. And uh, so I started, you know, reading again, I guess, and... I think he would gotten up to go to the kitchen, and I thought he was getting something to eat because um, I'd also given him some food. Um, so when we were first coming back to his apartment or his, the house, um, he had food, so I thought he was just grabbing some of that food. Um, and it was when he came back that he started pulling the Bible out of my hand. How long would you say you had been reading It was very long at all. Um, he was just maybe gone 15 seconds or something, or I don't know, 20 okay. seconds. So you, you weren't reading for a long period? Oh, no. Of time. no. Now, did you bring the food with you mm -hmm. on this occasion? Yes. Did you carry it in something? Yeah, a bag. Yeah, he carried it all. What kind of bag? I can't remember. <laughs> Do you recall what was in the bag? What kind of food? Like um, cereal, oatmeal, raisins, type of general food that I have. And what, you know, like a plastic grocery bag or a fabric bag? Probably. Um, I don't really, I can't really recall. Okay, but there was, there was a bag of food. Yeah. And where did you put the bag of food? I don't know. I think he just set it down on his kitchen table. Okay. And then you went in and started reading. And looked at his clothes. Yeah, and started reading. Okay. When you said you started grabbing the button, just tell us about what happened. How do you mean? Kidding? No, how do you mean? What, what do you, can well, you? I guess you said he started started grabbing the Bible. 
So tell us about that. Um, so when he started pulling the Bible from my hands, I just looked up like curious, like, what are you doing? And um, that's when he said, That's when he says you're not going anywhere. Oh. We started fighting. I tried to push him away and uh, and get up um, and uh, I was just doing everything, um, trying to kick punch, uh, but everything I did, he just did it so much harder. Did he hit you? Yes. With what? His fists. My face. One time, more than one time. Several times, as long as I kept fighting. And did you continue to fight? Until he started choking me. How was he choking? With both hands around my neck. Was he facing you? Uh huh. I stopped because I knew I couldn't get out of it. Did he say anything to you while this was happening? Nope. Did he let go of your neck? I think when I stopped struggling and fighting, he asked me if I had enough. And I just, I think I just remained motionless, and so he released his hands. And then what happened? He started pulling off my clothes. Did you continue to resist at that point? No. Why not? Because he already showed me that he was a lot stronger. I don't know. <laughs> Were you injured at that point? Uh, yeah. Did you lose consciousness at any time? No, but I was bleeding. From where? My head somewhere. Did he take all your clothes off? Yeah, he he was he started pulling them off, and I started hearing the fabric tear, and uh, I wanted clothes to get back into, so I took them off. Yeah. Did you want to take your clothes off? No, but I had no option. Was that due to the force that he had used on you? Mm-hmm. So what happened to your clothes? Um, I set him aside. I don't know. I can't really recall. I don't know. I mean...
at some point on the night of the 11th were you sexually assaulted? Several times. How would you assault? In every way imaginable. With what? How do you mean? is a nice guy. Have you ever made sexual advances to this? No. Not atypical from the way a guy, tort, you know, first tries to make advances. Okay, but nothing overt or rude? No. some point uh, were you tied up? Yeah. How many times were you tied up? At least three. Where were you tied? Um, you would always bind uh, my my wrists legs at times. To what? Um, sometimes to just weird positions. Um, sometimes just together. Um, sometimes uh, one time to the bed. So you were tied to the bed at some point. But you were also bound without being tied to the mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. When you were not tied to the bed, you said you were tied in a weird position. Yeah. What do you <clears throat> I don't know. Well, if, were you able to figure out his purpose? Something sexual. While you were bound, did he sexually assault you? I can't remember. I think, I don't know. I would just start protesting and sometimes he would just ease up. When you say ease up, what do you mean? I think the main thing is he wanted to get off. So, I think it was whatever, what was the question again? How would he be so? So if he saw something wasn't working, he would ease up. And working towards, you said, getting him off? <laughs> Does that mean that achieving a climax? <laughs> Ejaculating sexually. Mm -hmm. Was he having trouble doing that? 
After a while. Initially, did he eject? Yes. How many times were you tied to the bed? Um, I think just once. And what appeared to be the purpose behind tying you to the bed? Um, I think that was when he he wanted to leave. Okay. And how did he tie you? Um, my arms and my legs. Was there something tied around your neck? Yes. What did that appear to achieve? He told me, don't move or you'll strangle yourself. And did it tighten when you moved? Yeah. And what was that attached to other than your neck? Uh, I don't know because I was laying down. I mean, I, I assume the bedpost or... I don't know. I was laying down. Because you were already tied to the bed when that Yeah. Did he also have duct tape on you? Yeah. Where? On, over my mouth. Did he say anything while he was tying you to the bed and duct tape on you? I can't recall. Outside of the initial physical altercation, were you physically assaulted after that? I can't recall. Is it fair to say, Lori, that the entire experience is a bit of a blur? Yeah. Um, did he ever give you any pills or what appeared to be medication or any sort of substances? Yes. What was that? Uh, he said there were muscle relaxants. No. Pills, capsules? Pills. Okay. And did you take them? Yeah, he, he put them in my mouth. He put them in your mouth? Yes. Were you tied at the time? No. Yeah. Did you want to take them? Um, uh, not at first. Um, but he kept on saying, just to ease the pain. And after you took those, did he then continue to assault you? Yes. And did they appear, those pills, to have any effect on you? I don't remember. And they just, I was really really exhausted the whole time. At any point were you able to sleep? As much as I could. Okay. What happened when you weren't asleep? <laughs> were you being assaulted? Yes. So is it fair to say that if you were awake you were being assaulted and then you went to sleep? Would you wake up on your own? Or would you be I don't really remember. Were you threatened verbally? I don't recall verbally. He would just start um, choking me a lot. Do you recall if he would say anything about you? Uh, I, don't, 
I don't really recall. And what was your reaction to each other? I would just um, go limp. And did that appear to have any Yeah, then he would let go. Then he would let go? That... Yes, usually. And you said he put the pills in your mouth. Yes. Is that the only time he had his fingers in your mouth? No. What was he doing with his fingers? Crying open my mouth. Do you remember why? Yes. Why? I don't know how to say it. Did it, did it appear to be an attempt by him to facilitate oral sex? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> so at some point he put his penis in A lot. Did you ever vomit? Uh, yes. Was that during these episodes? Um, yes. Probably more. I have to be more. Probably more, you said? Yeah. Did he also put his fingers there? Um, I don't think so. Okay. At some point, did he put his penis in your hands? Yes. One time or more? More. And how about his fingers with respect to your I can't recall. Those occasions of him placing his penis inside you, were any of those with your consent? No. Were you there in that house with your consent? No. Were you free to leave? No. Was that made clear to you by Sean? Yes. How? I couldn't even move on my own without him jumping in reaction. Were you allowed to use the bathroom? Yes, but he'd walk me there. Watch or just make sure you didn't leave. I can't really recall. Did you have anything to eat? No. You said he tied you up and left. Do you have any idea how long he was gone? At least a couple hours. <clears throat> Did he say where he went? Uh, no. No. At any time, did you give him permission to enter your room? No. I take it you would have had your key on you? Yes. When you arrived? Yes. Do you know if he took your key? Uh, 
I didn't know at that time, no. And we've seen some pictures of uh, what look like homemade sex toys. Sort of these things wrapped in condoms. Did he ever assault you or use one of those on you? I don't know what he was doing behind me. I, I can't really recall. I don't know. Okay. In your presence, did he ever use one of those on himself? No. At some point, did he shame you? Yes. Yes. I don't even, I don't remember. I just remember him doing it. Was he doing it for any particular purpose? I have no idea. Did he say nope. anything wrong with it? I don't know. Was there anything particular he was sharing? How do you mean? What, what did he share? What do you mean? What part of you? Um, how do you say it? My private area? I don't know. Okay. However, however you want to say it. Okay. Okay. So he shaved your pubic area? Yeah. Okay. Did he shave a heart there? Yes. That's what he said. Yeah, that's yeah. what he said. Okay, so he said he was in the house. Yeah. Did he say why? No, I don't know. What did he do then? Uh, he had stuff. He had a cheever. Yeah. And a razor? Yeah. He also put makeup on me. I don't know what point. Okay. Did he say why he was putting makeup on? No, I I don't I didn't even really know what he was doing. You know, I'm just trying to sleep as much as I could. And uh, at some point, did he put Vaseline on? Yeah, I think I recall that. You recall why? Because <clears throat> it hurt. <coughs> Did it hurt when you put his penis in your vagina? Yes. <laughs> At some point while you were there, did he mention having access to a car? I think so. I don't, I'm not sure. Okay. You're not sure if you did or not? I think so. Did you, did you find that odd or did you believe it? I don't really remember. I can't recall the context or uh, it's just a blur. Was there any conversation about letting you go? Uh, yeah, several times. What was that? It was just the way to coax me or placate me and give me hope or something. Several conversations about Yep. Starting with the first night. I... Do you recall anything that you said about it? Just that it would be soon. During the course of this, did you really have any concept of time?
vaguely. I mean, I, I knew when, uh, yeah, vaguely, I mean, I had a semblance of the days. Now, at some point, did he put the items belonging to you in the bag? Yeah. And what went into the bag? I can't recall. Okay. Would that include your Bible? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. The DVDs. And other that it must have been. Yeah, I know he's packing up to give me. Yeah, every. So I don't know. Okay, so you packed up your things. Mm -hmm. And where did they go? Uh, where did they go? Um. He set them in the kitchen by the door. Okay. And did he place the clear bag of clothes next to the bag of anything? Oh, I, 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 I thought that was all together. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember what kind of bag you were The whole seat, yeah. That's what I can't remember. I don't know. Okay. But he kind of collected up your stuff. Yeah, so it must have been the bag of clothes along with another bag, yeah. What was he doing that for? Uh, it was just to keep me believing that he was going to let me go. So that was the second night. I think that was uh, to a way of getting me to believe that that after he was going to tie me up and and leave. Um, all my stuff would be ready to go when he came back. Okay. And when he came back, did you get to leave? <clears throat> no. This would be the time he turned you to the bed and left for Yeah. What happened when he came back? Um, I think he got high, and then he got sexual again. And he began to sexually assault you again? Yes. You know, we've heard some testimony that he had some tasers in the house. Yes. You're aware of that? Yes. Did he show you those tasers? Um, <clears throat> I can't recall. Did he ever use one on you? No. Okay. Ever threaten you with one? <sighs> no, I don't think so. To your knowledge, did he ever sleep? Um... The first, the first night, it was so lightly that if I even twitched in my sleep, he would like pounce up, like he was so alert. So if he slept, it was not very much at all. The second night, I think it was very late at night that he finally calmed down enough because I think he kept pacing. Um, and so I think it was because I was trying to sleep. Um, so I think it was. Uh, very late sometime into the second night. On the first night, did he tell you to the bed? Um, to sleep? I don't think so. How about the second? Um, I 
I think that that's why he was more nervous the second night, um, but in a different way. The second night he did tie me up. Just together, just my hands together and my legs together. And would he place you in any particular position on the relative to himself? Well, I was always um, up against the wall um, with, you know, with him right next to me. Um, uh, does that answer? What, what was your question? Okay. Now, at some point, did you wake up and he was asleep? Yes. I recall it was about six in the morning. Um, and it's phone is a alarm would go off it was it was going off all through the night but I was really out of it um so um um so so when I woke up and he was still next to me um I sat up, and he was still asleep. So that, um, I think I was working on trying to get unbound, but I was really frightened because the first night he was very alert to like my mo any kind of movement. So I think I started to creep down the bed and I got scared and I just I laid back down and just thought for a moment and I prayed. And then I sat back up and I reached over him, trying to get the phone that was going off every five minutes. And so I reached to the nightstand next to the bed, and I thought I found it. It was still dark in the room. So, you know, so I, I pulled my hand back and, and looked, and it was the taser. And I couldn't find the phone anywhere, like from where I was at. Um, so I started creeping down the bed and I snuck around the side of the bed and I was looking for the phone. Now, did he, there's a door between the kitchen and the bed. Yes. So was that door closed? Yes. And I had no doorknob. No, no doorknob. And there was a chair. What was the chair? Just getting in the, just something to block the door. Okay. Uh, not to move away from this point, but was there also a chair in the closet in the bedroom? I don't even recall a closet. I don't know. Wasn't an attempt to try to tie into a chair. Oh, I was. I think I was tied to a chair once. Okay. What happened when you were tied to a chair? I don't remember. At some point during all of this, <coughs> did he videotape you? Yeah. What did he videotape? It's when he was abusing me. What's on that video? Is it in any way consensual? No. I didn't even know he was doing it at the time. Did he tell you he was doing it? 
No. It was another time that he was doing it, or he, he wanted more sex and, and he brought out the cell phone and started recording before the act and I asked him not to. <coughs> and did he do anything? What do you mean? Did that? Did he acquiesce to that request? Or? Yeah, he put down his phone. <coughs> so you got up out of the bed, and you were looking for the cell phone. Mm -hmm. Did you find it? Yes. Did you say you, you accidentally picked up the taser as well? Yeah, I still had that in my hand. Okay, that's what you thought was the cell phone at first. And what did you do with the cell phone? Um, I slowly walked across the room to the door that was shut, and I called 911. Is this a different phone from Yes. <clears throat> and what happened when you called my number? What do you mean? Did you were you able to talk to the dispatcher? Mm hmm and Did most of that conversation occur while you were there in the bedroom? It all occurred while I was in the bedroom. At some point, did you set off the taser? Yes. And what happened when the taser He woke up. Tell us about that. I was on, I was talking to this dispatcher for a long time, and she just kept as, asking me questions, and I accidentally hit the taser, and uh, and the crackling is loud, and it woke him up. And he sat up. He put his feet down on the the floor, and I I was just <laughs> watching. Um, he's just really groggy, though. He just looked at the floor like he was still asleep or out of it. He just sat like that, it seemed like 30 seconds, and then he laid back down. What did you think when he moved up? At least the 911. They knew my name. Did you think you were ever going to leave that house? I didn't really look ahead too much, you know. I didn't. When I thought about it, it seemed impossible. Though, you know, how do you give up hope? I mean, what'd you do with the taser? Um, when he sat up. I put everything down. Um, in the hopes that I can at least tell him I was just trying to go to the bathroom. Okay. And when he laid back down, back to sleep. I picked up the cell phone. I don't remember the taser anymore. When all of this happened, you by the door? Mm hmm. At some point, were you able to get that door open? Yeah, when the cops were already being in on the, like, I mean, they weren't being in, but I knew the cops were there, and I knew they couldn't get in, or they weren't, yeah. And did you have to do anything to the door to get it open? Um, well, I had to move the chair, and 
there was something else by the door that uh, would have made noise. It was aimed at, you know, that if it fell over, you know, and and then yeah, I don't remember how I opened the door. It, just prying it open. And where'd you go when you got the door? To the kitchen door. And what happened? Um, and I think I unlocked the door and let the cops in. Okay. And what they did? Um, they did their thing. They did their thing? Mm -hmm. okay. Where did you go from there? Um, they had me come out of the house first. And um, I didn't have any clothes on. So um, after, I don't know, they were in there talking with them or something. Um, it was awkward. <laughs> being outside. So um, I think they said, you know, stand and go to the bathroom. Okay. And uh, did they <clears throat> get Sean? Mm hmm And did they take him outside? Mm hmm And then what did you do? And um, then they let me Get dressed. Okay. Back in your clothes? Yes. The clothes you were wearing when you got there on the 11th? Yes. Did you know what day it was? Um, is it a Monday or is it Tuesday? Yeah. I mean, probably if I thought about it, I don't know. <laughs> and where did it put you? Um, after I got dressed? Um, in the back of a police car. And at some point, did you leave that scene for somewhere else? Mm-hmm. Where'd you go? Um, to the police station. And did you talk to anyone here? Um, I think Kim Major. Okay. Was there a male detective that talked to you before Kim? I don't remember. Is that all kind of clear as well? Yeah. At some point, did you end up at the hospital? Mm-hmm. And did they treat you? Mm-hmm, yes. Were you injured? Um, I don't know. <laughs> did you have bumps and bruises? And yeah, it was pretty sore. Yeah. And after this, how long were you sore? <laughs> Over a week. <laughs> Several days. Oh, yeah. Did the bruises darken up? Um, I don't know. Yeah. Was there any money in your green wallet? Oh, no. Yes. Uh, yeah. On the 11th? Yep. So we went sh to the store, so I made sure I had money in there. Do you know how much should have been there? I don't know. Were you missing anything? A flashlight. What kind of flashlight? Uh, a little LED flashlight. Okay. Do you remember what color? It's like pink or red, maybe. Yeah, pink or red. Uh, bright silver. Oh, four or five inches. Okay. And how do you turn it on? Um, press the button at the end of it. Yeah, something. Like, yeah, I think so. I think so. That's it. Um, yeah, I think so. At any 
point in time when you were with Sean on the house. Did he threaten your life? Yeah, I think so. Do you recall what the specifics of that were? I want to say he said, I'm going to kill you, but. Yeah, I can. I don't know. It's, it's weird. It's the blur. At any time, did he give you any indication? No. Did you give him permission to take your key? No. Permission to go to your apartment? No. I had no idea that he ever did, except after the fact. I think Kim Major told me. Did you give him any permission to take anything? No. Yeah. Oh. Cross examine, Mr. Whitney. Can we take a break, Judge? How long? Ten minutes. Okay. Take a ten-minute break. Thank you.